Let's first understand what is a deadlock. So let's say we have a thread, let's call it thread one, which at some point in time acquires a lock, let's call it lock A. After some time, for some other processing, it also requires lock B. But before acquiring it, there is some other thread, let's call thread two, which has already acquired lock B. Okay, so until thread two is able to release the lock, thread one will not be able to acquire it. And thread two, incidentally, after acquiring lock B, is waiting for lock A to be released. So now thread one has one of the locks and it is waiting for other lock, while thread two has the other lock and it is waiting for the first lock. And there is no way for these two threads to proceed any further and this scenario is called a deadlock. So in terms of code, let's say we have two methods. There are two locks and in the first method which is process this, we are first acquiring lock A, we are doing some processing for the resource A and then we need the lock B because we are going to work on both resource A and B. Once we are done with the processing, we'll do an unlock on both the locks. Similarly, in process that, we'll acquire lock B first instead of lock A because we want to work with lock B or the resource B first. And then when we want to work with resource A and B, we'll acquire the other lock, which is lock A. And then we have two threads. The first thread is calling process this and the second thread is calling process that. And this code, this simple code will result in the same scenario which we saw earlier and it will result in a deadlock. So based on the example, we might think that it is easy to spot or to detect a deadlock at a compile time. That is while coding, is it easy to detect a deadlock? And unfortunately, the answer is no. And there are multiple reasons for this. One, Java comes with multiple lock types. We can do a synchronized on a method, which means we are acquiring a lock on the object on which the thread is running. We can do a synchronized keyword on a static method, which means that we have acquired the lock on class itself. There is the obvious lock type of reentrant lock and the rewrite lock, but there are also some concurrent utilities or the concurrent data structures which internally use locks. So we have one such utility called blocking queue. And when we perform the take operation on it, internally it has to acquire a lock. And in this case, we have a semaphore of maximum one permit. So when we say semaphore dot acquire, we have now acquired the permit and there are no more permits available. So if other thread tries to acquire the same semaphore, it will have to wait. So that also implicitly becomes a lock. So more often than not, our code is littered with multiple types of locks. And secondly, there are multiple sources of threads. We can have a thread which we start ourselves, though it is not very common these days. We could have thread pools. So here we have a fixed thread pool of size 10. That means there are 10 threads and these 10 threads are running some tasks and these tasks could be acquiring locks. We could have a scheduled thread pool in which we can schedule our tasks to run in a certain time duration. And there are thread pools created by the framework itself. So for example, if you're using Spring MVC or Spring Boot, which handle the in incoming requests, they have a certain set of threads in a thread pool. And whenever there is a request, a thread is assigned to handle that incoming request. And even if all these threads mentioned are in a runnable state, because of the way the CPU schedules, all of those threads are given a certain time frame to execute. If they are not able to complete their task, they are bumped off, they go back into the runnable state and other thread gets a chance, which is the fairness of the CPU scheduling. And because of this, it is very difficult to understand when a particular instruction or when a lock acquiring happens by your thread. And the third factor is it need not be just two threads and two locks. There could be multiple threads and multiple locks involved in creating that lock. So in this case, we have thread one, which has a lock A, it is waiting for lock B. There is thread two, which has acquired lock B, but it is waiting for lock C. And there is thread three, which has lock C, but it is like waiting for lock A. So there could be circular dependency between multiple threads and multiple type of locks which can be very difficult to detect based on just looking at the code. Because of these three reasons, 
it is difficult to understand if your code is going to deadlock. So how do we detect a deadlock at a runtime? So if your application is running and it has reached a deadlock, are there any tools available to detect a deadlock? And the answer is yes. So typically we need to create a thread dump of your application to understand the current state of the thread. Whenever we are running an application, we have to take the process ID of that application and we can run either of these two commands. Either we can run kill hyphen three and the process ID of the Java process. This will ask the JVM to print the current state of all the threads running in your application to the system console. If you want the state of the threads to be dumped into a specific different file, you can also use this Java tool called JStack where you can mention JStack and the process ID and you can just redirect all that output to a specific file. And within that file, or if you've used the kill command, then within the console, the JVM itself will detect deadlock clearly specify it in your output. So in this case, it says that it has found a deadlock. There is thread one, which is waiting for this particular mutex. And it is saying that that mutex is currently being held by thread zero. And similarly, we have thread zero, which is waiting for some mutex, which is currently being held by thread one. So that is a clear indication of a deadlock. And of course we have the method stack available here so that we understand at which line has our code triggered the deadlock. So one other way to detect a deadlock is Java provides this API, which you can constantly run in the background where the JVM can tell you if at any point in time, the application is in a deadlock state. So you can retrieve a thread MX pin using the management factory. And there is a direct method here which says find the deadlock threads. It will give you an array of all the thread IDs which are in a deadlock state. So what are the ways we can avoid a deadlock? So the first thing that might help is to just include a timeout for your locks. So let's say there is a thread which already has lock A and now it's trying to acquire a lock B. So you can say try to acquire lock B but wait only for two seconds to acquire it. Let me know if you have acquired it. And if the value of this is false, that means the log B is not available. Then maybe in this case, you can release the log A also. Because since you do not have log B, you can anyways not perform the operation. So you might as well release the log A also, so that if there is some other thread waiting for log A that can proceed, complete its job, release both log A and log B. And then here you can retry acquiring both the logs and then proceeding further. And most of the concurrent utilities which are blocking in nature do have timeouts to help us avoid these deadlocks. The other thing that we need to be cautious about is ordering of locks. So in the earlier example, we saw there were two methods process this and process that both were being run by two separate threads. So thread one had lock A and it was trying to get lock B while thread two had lock B and it was trying to acquire lock A. So in this case, we'll always acquire log A first and then log B. And in the same way, in the other method also, we'll first acquire log A, then we'll acquire log B. So same thing as before, thread one gets log A and thread two also tries for log A. But since log A is not available, it will go into the wait state. Thread one will acquire log B, do the processing, release the locks. And now both the locks are free to be acquired and thread two will acquire both of them and can proceed further. But global ordering of locks can sometimes be tricky. So let's consider this example. We have this method called transfer. We are saying transfer the amount of money from account one to account two. So we'll acquire the locks on account one and account two, and then we'll deduct the amount from account one and add the same amount to account two. We'll have, we have two threads. John is trying to transfer a hundred dollars to Marie and we have other thread where the opposite transaction is happening, where Murray is trying to transfer $300 to John. So in the first case, account one is John and account two is Murray. In the second case, account one becomes Murray and account two becomes John. So again, we have inconsistent ordering of locks. So even though everywhere in the code, we have written account one and account two, but the actual objects within that account can be different at different times. You can have a method which will tell you which of the account numbers is larger. So in this case, 
let's say John has an account number which is larger. You can assign it to account 1 and then the smaller one can be assigned to account 2. So in this way the locking account 1 first and then account 2 will always be consistent no matter what values are passed to. So in summary, deadlocks occur when a thread is waiting for a lock which is held by other lock and vice versa at the same time. It is difficult to detect because in Java there are multiple lock types which can be hidden and there are multiple sources of threads which can be created by us or the frameworks. You can detect deadlocks using thread dumps along with an API called thread MX bean. You can avoid deadlocks by using consistent ordering of locks and you can include a timeout during a lock acquisition such that if there is a deadlock then after the timeout, you can release all the locks and make those locks available for some other thread. That's it for this video. Thanks a lot for watching and see you in the next one. Bye.